religion is going fast down the tubes in America. <laughs> this is really interesting. This is a really interesting story, and I'm excited for the full book to come out. So, Ronald Englehart, one of the world's leading social scientists, claims in his upcoming book that the United States is experiencing a more dramatic shift away from religion than any other nation. He partially credits the religious right wing for this shift. Quote, in the United States, politics accounts for some of the decline. Since the 1990s, the Republican Party has sought to win support by adopting conservative Christian positions on same-sex marriage, abortion, and other cultural issues. But this political appeal to religious voters has had the corollary effect of pushing away other voters, especially those who are young and culturally liberal, away from religion itself. So that was only just one tidbit of this excerpt from his book. I read the excerpt. Um, if you guys go to um, Foreign Affairs and just Google Ronald Englehart, you can find the full um, excerpt of his book. And there are so many interesting statistics in just this one excerpt that was provided because, um, you know, to tease the release of his book. Like, for example, so... Um, he did a famous study from, I believe, 1981 to 2007 and studied religious attitudes over that long period of time. And what was interesting was he kind of made certain observations about how the fall of communism left an ideological void that gave um, the space for Orthodox Christianity to really blossom in the environments of these previously communist um, countries. And then this new book is looking at data from 2007 to 2019. And um, all this shift towards religiosity that he saw in his first study from 81 to 2007 is now going on a steep decline between 2007 and 2019. So, um, uh, from 2007 to 2019, only five countries became more religious, whereas um, the vast majority of countries shifted towards irrelig towards secularism um, and secularizing. Um, well, da, 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 da. And this, was but he said, what did he said? One of the United States is one of the leading ones when it comes to losing religion. Is that what he said? Yeah. Like the like uh, like what's the ranking? Um, so during this first study he did from 81 to 2007, near the end of the initial period studied, Americans' mean rate of the importance of God in their life was 8.2 on a 10-point scale. And the most recent study from 2017, the figure has dropped to 4.6, an astonishingly sharp decline. For years, the United States has been the key case demonstrating that economic modernization need not produce secularization. By this measure, the United States now ranks as the 11th least um, religious country for which we have data. Mm, interesting. Uh, the, what, any, any, anything about Iran in these studies? Um, maybe in uh, the not that it was mentioned in this excerpt for the book um like in what was published i believe was just like one chapter so there's a potential that maybe it's covered in other places but not within um this okay. chapter it did talk a lot about how um wait let me find it does seem to be a global thing though yes um i don't, I don't know how united States could be okay sorry it's fine it was really interesting um, he also talks a lot about how birth rate has a mm. lot to do with um, changing in religious attitudes. So, um, and he talks a lot in this article about how um, existential threat um, often goes hand in hand with higher religiosity. So in the countries where you see some of the highest rates of religiosity, where you see the highest rates of murder, and mm. where you see the highest rates of corruption are also some of the most highly religious countries. Not because they are religious, but because they are um, insecure nations. And oh, yeah. while insecure, that provides 
the um, context for human psychology to be looking for something to attribute control to, right? Right. Um, it might not suggest that religion causes those things all the time, but it also, but it does suggest that maybe it doesn't stop them, though, right? Exactly, and that's what he talks about. Um, oh, really? Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a better indicator of um, the. In insecurity, um, existential insecurity of certain nations for the higher religiosity. Um, there was, um, yeah, as societies develop from agrarian to industrial to, to knowledge-based, growing existential security tends to reduce the importance of religion in people's lives, and people become less obedient to traditional uh, religious leaders and institutions. Um, and so he was talking about how also like the insecurity of COVID um, can actually increase people's um, feeling of inse uh, existential insecurity. And so he's like, if this leads into a, like a second great depression, um, you know, that could potentially give rise to more religiosity as people are dealing with insecurity because of pandemic related situations. But he's saying um, he thinks that shift is unlikely when we're going right. backwards um it, it seems to have like in many places i don't know if what's in the united states but in many places in the world uh COVID has contributed to a lot of people doubting their religious beliefs so i don't know sometimes sometimes cat catastrophic events makes people uh cling to religion harder because they feel like they're desperate and they need like a higher source of power to help them but sometimes it's the, it does the opposite because people question how a loving god could allow something like this but i don't know if there is which which one of these is more powerful mm -hmm. um, but it seems to be like different at different times it causes different reactions from people i do know for example in iran it caused a lot of people to rethink their views about religion um in a less religious you know a lot of people started doubting uh god because of this but i don't know you know i don't know what makes one trend more likely than the other one that um, that's tough to tell. Um, yeah. I mean, I know we covered a few weeks ago um, news about how, like, right at the start of the pandemic, there were like record-setting numbers of people googling prayers and people googling um, specifically like COVID or pandemic-related prayer. So it would make sense that you know at the beginning of something as um, peculiar. And unprecedented as this pandemic would, you know, give rise to an initial um, kind of rush to find prayer and find meaning in things. That makes sense to me. Um, but it was really interesting. He talks about how um, these his, the statistics that he's looking at um, does not support the idea that um, religion is needed for social cohesion because mm. you know that's something that like a lot of people try to pitch especially like i feel like muslim apologists in particular um and um so he was saying that based on um certain statistics of um government and business transparency and corruption um like highly secular nordic states are some of the uh, have the world's lowest levels of corruption and highly religious societies such as bangladesh guatemala iraq tanzania and zimbabwe have some of the highest obviously mm -hmm. religi religiosity does not cause corruption countries with low levels of economic and physical security tend to have high levels of relig religiosity and mm -hmm. high levels of corruption the yeah, correlation um, is not causation there are external factors that mm -hmm. affect both right um it yes Although, Any mention of Australia? No, um, oh. not explicitly in this. Um, again, this is only an excerpt. Um, the people of religious countries are slightly more likely to condemn corruption than the people of less religious countries, but the impact of uh, religion on behavior ends there. Religion might make people more punitive, but it does not make them less corrupt, which I thought was a really interesting point. And they also talk about how one of the key um factors in uh this decline has to do with fertility hmm. um so let me find it um during the 20th century a growing number of countries attained drastically reduced infant mortality rates and higher life expectancies making these cultural norms no longer necessary meaning the absolutist dogma of 
pro-fertility in most religions. Um, like, where does it say? Um, it's okay. Let's, let's. I think we got into enough detail. Yeah. If, we, if, if somebody wants to nerd over these things, there's a link in the description. Yes. AJ wants to nerd um, over. But they also talk about how basically more and more countries are becoming liberalized and have a greater bent towards supporting enlightenment values. Wait, let me find Wait, this. Wait, does it actually mention enlightenment values? Wait, does just it actually... a second. Oh, I found it. As, um, as traditional religiosity declines, an equally strong set of moral norms seems to be emerging to fill the void. Evidence from the World Values Survey indicates that in highly secure and secular countries, people are giving increasingly high priority to self-expression and free choice, with a growing emphasis on human rights, tolerance of outsiders, environmental protection, gender equality, and freedom of speech. Mm. That's great. I wish my enlightenment values was mentioned just like, I know it was in all of these were enlightenment values, but I wish like people actually used it just so that people go check it out. Yeah. And to, more easily identify. Yeah. I just, we need to popularize. Yeah. The idea of people saying enlightenment values, enlightenment values, use it guys, use enlightenment values in your vocabulary often. So people go like, what the, what is that? Like, so. It becomes the norm for people to use that, right? Yeah, I, I highly go recommend people go read this um, article. It was super good. It's called Giving mm -hmm. Up on God, The Global Decline of Religion in Foreign Affairs by Ronald Englehart. Because then he also talks about those values, those um, liberalized values. Um, he looks at various countries and where they've reached their tipping point the tipping point of acceptance of these um <laughs> vince's comment um yeah the tipping point of accepting these values and more and more countries are hitting that tipping point um but uh yes plug for steven pinker's enlightenment now as i was hey thank you aga for posting the link um as i was reading through this article i kept on thinking about enlightenment now and mm. these are all things that we support and so it was really cool to read this article especially in uh coming in my country we're winning. We're winning. <laughs> yeah, Yay. so starting off with some good news this week. <laughs> All right. Let's go from some good news to some ridiculous news. How about that? Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, we should look at the wait, comments wait, for this one, too. No, this is okay. bullshit. Wait, hold on. Let me just address this. Norman is saying enlightenment values are 100% present in modern Christianity, especially prosperity gospel. Bull <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> Nope. Um, Prosperity gospel, like that was your example? Oh, yeah, that's the worst <laughs> example. There's no, yeah, Christianity is 100% anti enlightenment values, and you actually gave us the worst example of that, right? Anyways, news, thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel, hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, what has, what's holding you back, okay? If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button. But nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that, but we don't care about that anymore, <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritize. What does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 